Welcome back to the Eurosport GCN Cycling Show. Sonny Combrelli is the winner of Paris-Roubaix. He can't believe it. I started crying and screaming because it was so unexpected. Pure emotion and a victory that will last a lifetime. What we didn't know back in October was that Cabrelli's emotional win at Paris Roubaix might turn out to be the last of his career. Equally dramatic scenes at last month's Volta a Catalunya, where Colbrelli suffered a heart attack after the finish of stage one, leaving his future uncertain for now. But with the Italian star recovering at home after successful surgery, we can relive a race that will define his career regardless of what is to come. So many years of sacrifices and close calls during my career. It was all worthwhile. I was really relaxed. I wasn't thinking about anything. All I thought was to get some experience out of it, as it was my first Paris-Roubaix. Then when I saw the weather and the women's race the day before with all those crashes, I just thought I was going to crash at least a couple of times. Oh, and down, and down. Another crash, oh, crash, another crash, that's Mozzato down. On that day I went close to crashing a few times and had to put a foot down to avoid it. Look at the state of that! I've seen cyclocross races with less mud than this. I was feeling better and stronger as the race went on and I was getting more confident. I wasn't focused on Moscon in front despite the fact he was going very strong. In my head, I only had one objective, and it was to follow Mathieu van der Poel. Oh, he's down. And bad luck all over the race now for poor Gianni Moscon. To win Barry roubaix you also have to be lucky. To avoid crashes, punctures, and mechanical, especially in such a wet and muddy Barry roubaix where we could all barely see the front wheel. The Ineos rider was soon reeled in and then dropped. The most dangerous rider in this game right now is Sonny Cobrelli. My main fear there was to lose contact with Van der Poel in the corners. Because at the beginning of the Carrefour de l'Arbre, we could all see how many corners there are. I kept losing five, six metres on Van der Poel at every one of them. Colbrelli making his move. Sonny Colbrelli in the form of his life. When he reeled me in but didn't counter-attack, I understood he was tired too. Many people told me that whoever entered the velodrome in first position never won the race, in a group obviously, so I thought better not to go first. One and a half laps now, the famous old concrete velodrome. I was following Van der Poel and he was the most dangerous in the sprint. We didn't expect Vermeers to still have energy left after 200 kilometers up front. I sat on Van der Poel's wheel and I knew I had to stay in the middle of the track. Then Vermeers went and I jumped on his wheel, but we were all tired. I overtook Vermeers with 50 metres to the finish line and until the end I just hoped that Van der Poel couldn't get back. Vermeers is holding on! Vermeers is holding on! Colbrelli through the centre! Colbrelli through the centre! Viva Italia! Forza Italia! They've done it finally! It was the cherry on the cake of a really, really important year.
Many people keep telling me I still haven't grasped the magnitude of the win, but on one hand, it's better this way. Heroic, warrior-like, and now the outpouring of emotion. It sinks in every morning when I see the cobble on the table. It's there staring at me. Thank <laughs> you.